Hey everybody, this is Flavio Romeo, and on this episode of the Towncast, we had the chance to catch up with Steve Sarowitz, who we had on several months ago. He is the owner of the Wayfair Theater, uh, which used to be the Renaissance Theater in Highland Park, Illinois, uh, also co-owner of Wayfair Studios, and also we talked about his philanthropic work and some of the amazing work that his, uh, that his foundations are doing. All right, enjoy the episode, everybody. All right, everybody, so here we are. We're back in Highland Park. We're back at the Wayfair Theater. If you remember the last time we had a chance to speak to Steve Sarowitz, uh, they were, the Wayfair Theater has just opened up. And again, I, you know, thank you for coming on again. I know how busy you are. The man's resume can fill a novel. He has so much going on. I don't know where you find the time to even share with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Everyone can find time if they want to. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Uh, so the last time we met, you had just taken over the Wayfair Theater, which used to be the Renaissance Theater. And I know you had some, some great vision uh, and, and what you wanted to see happen. And as we watch your posts, and if you're not, if you don't subscribe, make sure you follow the Wayfair Theater and so you can see a lot of the events that they have going on because they're amazing and I'd like to talk a little bit about that. So when you first took over, you had this vision, tell me what's transpired over the past several months. Well, we've executed on our plan and we're actually just getting into the remodel which is really great. So we're going to do a, an over a million dollar remodel which wow. is just going to be kicking off. So it's, pretty, it's, a, it's a very nice looking theater now. We think it's going to be the nicest looking theater in all of Chicago when we're done. What are you looking to do? What kind of changes? Well, we're going to have uh, a hologram uh, in, in the front. Uh, we're going to have uh, full length, because uh, Wayfair Studios is a studio, so we're going to have our movies playing. Nice. So when you walk in, think, of, think Disney World, except in a very high class Disney World where you come in and you really feel like you're visiting Wayfair Studios. Right. And then uh, we're going to do some beautiful uh, just, it's going to be a, a beautifully designed atmosphere um, with design. I have Tianchi, who's a, a friend of mine locally, who's an incredible designer. And she's, got, she's spent months getting this incredible design. She's from China. Uh, cool. And uh, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be unique. Yeah, and, and you know, I love, I love the things that you're doing for the children, some of the shows that you're bringing back, uh, as well as a lot of the Q&As. And, and for, for you guys that don't know, uh, you are a co-chairman, co co-owner of Wayfair Studios? I'm co-chairman and, and co-owner of Wayfair Studios and, and chairman and founder of Paylocity. Yeah. Um, so the Q&As have been really great for us. Um, we've had a lot of incredible nights. So we just had a really great Q&A with Gina Davis, who is one of my favorite people. And we had an audience primarily of women um, who are really inspired by Gina and her work for gender equity. I'm inspired by her work, and, and we had a, she and I had a great conversation yeah, that's on right. stage. Um, I've been supporting her work for over six years. Uh, we had uh, another hero of mine, Jane Goodall. You can tell I have a, a great love and a respecter yeah. of women, and especially great women like Jane and Gina. Uh, we had the uh, Rain Wilson came. He's a very good friend of mine. Yeah, so I've right. basically been inviting my friends to, <laughs> to come and talk. And but I you know, it's so great for the community. I mean, you know, why keep that friendship to yourself when you can share it with, with so many other people? Um, Rain has a great new book called Soul Boom. We talked about that, why we need a spiritual revolution. My partner, Justin Baldoni, came. Uh, it was a very last minute thing, but we still pretty much filled the theater. The funny thing is we had two fire alarms, not one, but two while oh, he was no. here. And what Justin did, which illustrates who Justin is, is he quietly and graciously signed autographs and met people without missing a beat outside the theater while the alarm was going off. Wow. So, but he's, you know, I, I, I can't, as I've said many times publicly and privately, he's an incredible business partner and an incredibly talented guy working on uh, the movie It Ends With Us right now with Blake Lively, yeah. so, which is going to be a very big movie. And, and Justin, is an, people will see this. I think he's already made two successful movies. He made Clouds and Five Feet Apart. 
It Ends With Us will be his third movie, and I'm sure it will be his most successful. Yeah, so, so since you have this studio, I might as well ask, how has the, the writer's strike, which is now over, and the Screen Actors Guild, how, how has that affected you guys? It's actually good for us. Um, we are movie rich right now. So we had, we had been working on a lot of movies. We just sold, and it was just announced this week, our movie Ezra to Bleecker Street. So that'll be, a, uh, that'll be appearing in theaters in the spring. We have another movie, Code 3, which we're just finishing up, which we're very proud of, with Rain Wilson about paramedics. Uh, we have a couple documentaries. We have actually um, nine movies in production, and the only one that wasn't finished uh, in terms of the, the filming that was affected was It Ends With Us. Okay. which hopefully the strike will end and it won't be affected. But if it's delayed, it's delayed. It's not, it's not the end of the world for us. Well, and Ezra, if you guys haven't seen the, uh, the ads for it or the, the, the posts about it, that's, that's the one starring Robert De Niro. It is. Bobby Cannaval. Yes. It looks, it, looks, it looks like it's going to be a great film. It is a great film. I watched it at Toronto. Oh, you did? Yeah, we, we debuted it at Toronto Film Festival, and the audience loved it. That's great. There were a couple of naysayers, but you know everyone sees their own thing. But right. by and large, it, it, the movie's been getting great reviews. There are always naysayers. <laughs> I love the movie. I love the movie, and uh, I got the movie. And the movie is really a beautifully written movie about fathers and sons. And uh, being a father and having a son that I love very much, and not always being a perfect father, it's about fathers admitting their imperfections yeah. and loving their sons, yeah. which I surely do. So I, I, asked, I wanted to ask you last time, and I thought we'd save it for this one. How did you, I know that you, you founded Paylocity. So, so tell me a little bit about your background. You, did, you, did you grow up in this area? I grew up in Homewood, Illinois. Okay. For the most part, since I was seven. Okay. So I grew up in the south suburbs. I, but I've lived in Highland Park for 27 years now, uh, my wife and I and our two children. And it, it is, um, you know, I, Highland Park has changed. Highland Park has got some challenges right now. And I believe that we need Wayfair Theaters. <clears throat> the Q&As are really our bread and butter. We've, we actually have two going on tonight. We have a beautiful film called Memorial coming with uh, John Siskel. And I'm, I actually um, am the executive producer of that film. And I'm oh. extremely, extremely proud of the work that John has done. When is that opening? Um, I don't know where it's going to open. It's just been showing privately. but. Uh, John is uh, John is an amazing uh, he's he's an amazing director and and what he did uh, with a very very difficult subject is is nothing short of. Can miraculous. you talk a little bit about about the uh, the subject of the film? Well, on July fourth of last year, uh, Highland Park had an awful incident, a uh, mass shooting. Uh, unfortunately, we're having mass shootings almost weekly around the country, and so I guess it was our turn. Um, I'm very much against gun violence, I'm against hatred, I'm against everything that divides humanity. And, and so we are a suffering community. We've had multiple murders since then, actually. And I think that, I said this to you before we started the interview, a lighted candle shines brightly in a dark room. And so it's my goal and my ambition just to make the theater a lit candle, a lighted candle, to bring light. So we're bringing films that are, that are full of light, full of love, inspirational films. We don't play violent films. Um, we actually are playing a, a film, we make an exception sometimes if the subject matter is important, Killers of the Flower Moon, but it's because we believe in the subject matter yeah. that we're doing it. But typically we do not play films with a lot of violence. And uh, we're playing more uplifting, inspiring films, educational films. The Q&As that we're um, running are really to help educate. And I think this community needs that. We need that community involvement. Uh, we're doing a film tonight with the JCC of Chicago, and the Jewish community is hurting right now. Yeah, it's, they, it's a very difficult time. The Jews need support. Um, you know, and the Muslim community is hurting here, too. And so, you know, I've played films. Uh, we had a, a film, Stranger at the Gate, which was really in support of the Muslim community about um, a man who hated Muslims so much he wanted to blow up a mosque and ended, ended up becoming a Muslim due to the love he got from the Muslim Is it community. a true story? Based on a true story? It is a true story. I've met the true people. Wow. So, so we've played, you know, my attitude, I'm, I'm a Baha'i and I love humanity. And so if someone needs my love, my help, I'll give it to them. Right now, the Jewish community is suffering from a huge rise in anti-Semitism. Yeah. 
Um, it's been around for a long time. I come from a Jewish background. Twenty members of my family were killed in the Holocaust. I stand in support of my Jewish friends and family members who are suffering right now. And I also stand in support of Muslims who are, who are experiencing um, Islamophobia. We are all human beings. And actually, what's interesting, my friend just called me from NBC, and uh, she asked me if I was doing anything in Israel. She'd heard about a couple things I was doing. And I um, linked her up to three of my friends, three of the projects we're, we're supporting in Israel. We're supporting a high school that has Muslims and Jews together along with uh, students from 50 different countries. Really? We have a center that we built there. This, for this is in, in Israel? Yes. Wow. And uh, we have, um, it's GHI. Uh, the uh, other one is uh, we have a center in Akko, Israel we built for Jews and Arabs, which my friend uh, Naeem, who's a Palestinian Christian, is running it. It's, it's just amazing. It's doing great work. And then the third project is in Haifa, uh, University of Haifa. They have uh, an interfaith religious forum which is run by uh, a man by the name of Oriel Simonson. And Oriel and I are, have become very good friends, and he is doing amazing work convening religious leaders from across the Middle East. He had the first interfaith religious conference last uh, earlier this year. I saw your post for that. Yeah. yeah. That's so amazing. He, yeah, he's, he's doing incredible And talk, talk about the, va the diversity that you had represented there. Well, we had, we had Druze, um, we had Muslims, we had Christians, we had Jews, uh, we had Baha'is. And it's interesting, you know, there's only one God. And that God has told us through every prophet to love each other. And it's really a tragedy that humanity hasn't figured that out yet. Yeah. It's my job, I think, if I do nothing else with the rest of my life, to tell the world that we're one human family and that we can love each other, we must love each other, and in the end, that we will love each other. That peace is not only possible, but it's inevitable. And it's people like Uriel and Naeem, uh, my friend Narita at GHI, who are doing that work, and we just need to support that work, all of us together, and do that same kind of work here. And, and that's what the theater is for. The theater is a gathering place for the community. Uh, we are doing great work with the uh, Highland Park Film Club from the high school. Oh, so wow. we're, we're, we're working to serve the community as much as we can. We're, we have a, a film outing we're talking about with Kesha. Uh, so we, my goal is to be the place the community comes to gather to celebrate, you know, a, along with Ravinia and the, Har the Highland Park Arts Center and other places sure. that we have here. We have, an am we have an amazing set of resources in this yeah, town. Yeah, it's, it's very arts rich. It's a very arts rich community. We are. And I'm working together with the other people in the arts to really build up the community and make it a, a destination spot, not only for people from Highland Park, but for the entire area. Yeah, and the other thing to remember is that, you know, it, it's, there are not many communities that have small theaters like this. And once they go away, they go away. So it was so encouraging when, you know, you'd heard that it was closing down, that you felt it in your heart to say, can't let that happen. Well, for me, I had a, another reason. I'm a movie maker, and so like, wow, I have a movie theater in my backyard. <laughs> now you have your own theater. <laughs> I'm talking to my friend right now about debuting his film, uh, which uh, stars Bono, and uh, it was it was he actually made with Matt Damon, and I don't know if you ever heard of these guys, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Uh, I think they have seen him in something. So so he and I, the director and I, are making another film together. So he, I told him he's looking for a place to show in Chicago. He said, "Do you have a place to show in Chicago?" I said. I think I could find As luck one. would have it, yeah. <laughs> I have an, another friend who does uh, testing. Uh, he tests what audience reaction is. He oh, says, okay. would you like to do that? I said, sure. Like focus you know, group kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, like, we want to be very creative in how we use the theater. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I love what you do with the kids. I love, you know, you're showing classic films, not only for adults, but for families. Well, we're doing that with Billy Corgan, uh, The Smashing Pumpkins, and, and he... Uh, he, we've, we've done this beautiful thing, we've, we've showed Willy Wonka, we've showed uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Mary Poppins, we've showed these classic films, and it's amazing, I've had a chance to see a few of them on the big screen. We just showed Casablanca with, for adults on the big screen, and when you see these old classic films, kids films, and adults films, it's just different on the big screen. Yeah. In general, you know, I've had many people tell me, well, why do you want to open up a theater? I could just sit in my living room. I said, you could do that all day long, but eventually you got to leave your living room, or right. at least I hope you do. Well, and, and that's what I try to tell people, because I, I love promoting and encouraging and supporting, you know, local community theaters, because, and I get the same, I get the same pushback. You know, I, I could sit at home, I could make my popcorn, I could sit there. I said, yeah, but the thing is, you, you look at your phone, 
you put it on pause, you go to the bathroom, you have to get something to eat, somebody else calls you. It's not an experience. Once you walk into that movie theater and the lights go down, that's it. That's the experience. Every movie maker, I'll, I'll speak for all of Hollywood, and I don't always agree with the films we make in Hollywood. Like, we'll never show Co Cocaine Bear at our a movie theater. <laughs> but, uh, Good. But, but every movie maker thinks that all their films should be shown on the, on the big screen. There's, I've never met a movie maker who says, I want to show it on streaming. Every movie maker wants, and the reason is it's different, and it's better for everybody. It's better for the movie maker, but it's so much better for the audience. And just, you know, like I said, would you do everything else in your house? You know, we've kind of had that thing with offices. Well, work remotely, work remotely. And guess what happened? All the big tech firms that were all work remotely are now calling their staff back. We at Paylocity are doing that to a certain extent because you need that social interaction. You cannot replace in person. I do Zoom calls all day long. I get it. Yeah. But there's, there's nothing you can beat. And the Q&As we're doing are really the magic. One of my favorite Q&As was with Keith, uh, uh, Keith Beauchamp, who is the producer of Till. Oh, okay. it was, we had people crying after that. It's a very hard-hitting movie, and when Keith talked about his 20-year journey, I mean, I was touched beyond touched. And I would say that that's what we're doing here. We're building something special. We're building experiences that you could never get sitting at home. And we'll continue to do that, and I believe as we, um, as we do that, as we continue to do that, we will grow and grow and grow our base. The biggest thing we need right now is more members. We need community support. Like you said, you know, I, I'm happy to do a lot of lifting, but the thing I would ask of the community to help me is to become a member at the theater. It's a great deal. It's $25 a month if you're of age, which I'm getting close now. I just turned 58 <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Happy but, birthday. But for people who are 65 and over, it's $20 a month for unlimited, month, uh, unlimited movies. And for people my age and, and younger, um, thank you very much for the happy birthday. <laughs> for people my age and younger, it's $25 a month. I mean, for basically a little bit more than you'd spend for one movie at AMC. Right, exactly. You, have, you can see as many movies as you want for free. And we, we need members, really. I've looked at the financial model. We need members. Right now, we have about 150 members. I think we need probably about 1,000 members, 1,500 members to really have to a sustain, set. Yeah. To sustain. And I, I think we'll get there over time. And listen, it's it's... $25 a month, and you have five screens. We have five screens, and you can come to all of our theaters. It's, it's really an amazing deal. Plus, you get discounts on, on uh, popcorn and concessions, so it's, it's more than that. Yeah, like you and, said. And we have special things, like Rain Wilson was a members-only event. Oh, what? Oh, so you do, okay, so you're doing members-only. Oh, yeah. For $25, like you said, you go to AMC, and you're spending that on a ticket. Yeah. Just to walk in. Yeah. And, and now you can see all the films, plus your member-only events. H how do they become members? Um, they can do it online at Wayfair Theaters. They can come into the theater, but it's just easy. You can go right to our, right to our website and become a member. And the other thing we're going to be doing, and I would say you want to do it now before next year, is we're going to start debuting all our films. And our members will have first dibs on all of our films. Oh, so, so you'll have premieres we, for we're the gonna members. Have, we are going to have a lot of big premieres here. That's exciting. So Red remember, carpet the, kind of thing? Red carpet in our Yay. newly redesigned. <laughs> I mean, this will be the best looking theater probably in the Midwest when we're done. That's amazing. And I, I'm, I'm saying that just because I, I, I've seen the design. There's no, you, know, you don't see anything like it. There, there's some of the uh, big IMAX theaters, which are very cool. But this one will be much more high end. In, you know. In, and, and artistic in ways that they're not. You've achieved everything that you've set out to do so far, so I can't imagine that this is going to be any different. Everybody fails. I could fail. But, you know, I, I would say to the community, it's, if I fail, it's because the community doesn't want this. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. But I think the community does want it. A lot of people, almost everybody, stop, I get stopped on the street all the time, people say, who say, thank you, thank you for what you did. And I would say, thank me and also become a member. Right, right. And you know what? Listen, holidays are coming up. Whether you're, you know, no matter what holiday you're celebrating, the gift of the arts, the gift of filmmaking, the gift of going to a theater with loved ones, friends, family, having the lights go down and holding hands and watching and just being completely engulfed in, in the experience, there's nothing like that. And for $25, it's a stocking stuffer. You know, become a member, put it in the stocking, and, and give the gift of creativity and now, now you not only have 
a, a, a theater owner, you have a filmmaker who's going to be bringing all of that to this community, which is, when does that happen? Well, there are a few theaters like this around the, around the country, and those theaters are doing pretty well. I, I don't think the community yet knows a lot of what I'm doing. I mean, uh, most of our big films haven't come out yet. Code 3 hasn't come out yet. Ezra just announced it's coming out. So I think 2024 will be, be big. will be big because we'll finish the remodel hopefully in early 2024. We'll get our films coming out. We're also bringing out Garfield for the kids. That's where we're involved. Oh, are you? So I, I'm, I'm one of the producers of that as well. Oh, that's fun. Um, so yeah, we have, like I said, we have a lot of different movies. And how did this whole love, I mean, did you always love movies growing up? I did love movies growing up. I never thought I'd be a movie maker. I became a Baha'i in 2015. Three days after I became a Baha'i, my friend Farshid, I told him I'm just going to retire because my company had gone public. I had as much money as I needed and then some the rest of my life. And I said, I'm just going to retire. I'm going to tell people about the Baha'i faith and its message of unity. And he said, well, you could do that or you could make a movie about the Baha'i faith. If you make the movie, you could reach millions of people. And less than an hour later, I got an email from a movie maker, a uh, film producer by the name of Peter Samuelson. And Peter wanted to talk to me about philanthropy, about foster children. And I went and talked to him about that and said, it, by the way, someone just told me to make a movie. And the next thing you know, I'm on a three-year odyssey to make a movie called The Gate, Dawn of the Baha'i Faith. Wow. There's a poster right there for it. And it became the seminal movie about the start of the Baha'i Faith. We showed it to millions of people around the world. Um, it was actually, because this is actually interesting in terms of world events today, but should we stop for a second while no. the sirens go? Okay. No. Love natural sound. <laughs> <laughs> They're working. This is, this is, this is. It. Oh, there's a, there, that's a paramedic. That, that's a, that's, See, an, ad, that's an ad for Code 3. That's actually. Code 3, right. <laughs> Which is he a, planned this. Um, you know, it got an 88% audience rating while it's still a rough cut. It's an amazing wow. movie. That was with Rain, right? That's with Rain Wilson and, and very talented Little Rel Howery, who's from Chicago. Oh, really? So, um, made the gate, um, and the Iranian government hated it so much that they actually took the movie down, took, it's a, it's a documentary, took all of our experts out, put all their own experts in, and then re-released re it, tried to re-release it. Really? They weren't so successful. I would imagine not. But, uh, you know, it's the movie that the Iranian government doesn't want you to see, wow. which, which I like. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if you look at what's happening in the Middle East right now, Iran is behind most of it. They, they're, they're the funders of Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Houthis, all of whom are attacking Israel right now. And I don't like to get involved in the politics. I'm a Baha'i, and I will tell you that I want to say I, I love, love, love Muslims, Palestinians, I love Jews, people. I, want, I love people. But I will say that Iran is the greatest supporter of terror in the Middle East and that the act on October 7th, I was in Israel on October 7th actually. You were. And I will condemn that act by Hamas as, as a terrible terrorist act, beheading babies, um, raping women. This is not something that is ever okay. And there is no justification for an act like that. Whether or not Israel's response is totally justified, whether Israel's, I'm not going to get into it because I'm not even sure. I'm not a military expert. But I will say that I'm going to condemn the, the original terrorist attack. You know, I, I condemn all terrorist attacks, whether they're against Jews, Palestinians, Arabs. Yeah, terrorists. Terrorists. The, the terrorists. I, 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 would, I would condemn that. And I pray for peace. And I work for peace every day with Palestinians, with Jews, that's my, that's my passion, is to say, look, guys, we are all praying to the same God. The earth is but one country and mankind and citizens. That's right in my yard. And, and trying to convince people that, no, we don't have to live like this. I believe that, unfortunately, the government of Iran is pushing an agenda that's, that's divisive. And I hate to say that. I'm not promoting that that government be replaced. As a Baha'i, I couldn't. We do not get involved in politics. Yeah. But I will say that the persecution of the Baha'is in Iran is terrible. That needs to stop. And also in Qatar. Really? And Yemen. Yeah, there's, there's many countries where there's terrible per persecution of Baha'is. And so I'm all for justice. And justice everywhere in the world. Yeah.
you know, a lot of the movies we show in the theater are anti-racism movies because racism is still a problem in this country. It's hate, just hate. Any, I'm, I'm, our, our movie theater, if you really want to know what we stand for, we stand for the oneness of humanity. We stand, and this is how our movie company stands for too, the nobility of every human being. Whether you be a woman, a person of color, whether you be a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, an atheist, a Buddhist, we want to show the nobility of every human being and to promote this idea of fraternity apart from our tribes, to break out the tribes and say our tribe is the human tribe, our family is the human family. Yeah. And if everyone thought like that, imagine a world where everybody thought like that. The Baha'i world thinks like that. I was just at a Baha'i event and it was like that. It was very diverse. Every Baha'i event I ever go to just about is very diverse and with so much love. That is the real nature of the world. Our problem is we're not seeing it. We have these veils that are preventing us from seeing the simple truth that we're one human family. Yeah. We know now that there's only one human race. Most of us would acknowledge that there's only one God. And most of us would acknowledge that God has told us to love each other. Yeah. We know women, or at least, well, I actually had someone try to argue with my friend that this wasn't the case, but <laughs> most of us would, would say that women are equal to men. You know, all the things that are preventing world peace, we can get through those if we try. Yeah, if we try, if we try. Well, I know you do a lot of philanthropic work. Mm -hmm. So uh, you started you started a foundation. Yes. Uh, you talk two. About, you started two, right? Yes. Can well, we one, one my wife and I started together, one I started by myself or with my partner, Justin. Yeah, can we talk a little bit about those? So Julie and Grace is our family foundation. I'm very proud of the work we do. Uh, Scott McClellan is our executive director. He's great. Used to run a nonprofit that we that my wife started. Um, we are very very proud of the work we've done for many years in Chicago. Uh, Julie and Grace, you know everything I just said about the oneness of humanity. Um, the main recipients are people of color. We do a lot of work in the Hispanic community, African American community, Native American community. So. We do a lot of work supporting those. I always say it this way, we're all flowers in the garden. And some of those flowers have had a little less rain and a little less sunshine through no fault of their own. We just provide a little rain and sunshine where it hasn't been. I'll support anybody that needs it. Unfortunately, there are more needs in those communities. Yeah. Um, and Wayfair Foundation is more of the same. I would say the difference with Wayfair Foundation, uh, what makes it different than most foundations, is that it has a very strong spiritual stance and that we go to every person we're funding, all of our funding partners, fundee partners, um, we go to them and say, what is your spiritual reason for being? You know, how, what are you doing on the spiritual realm? So we believe at Wayfair, and I believe personally, that most of the major problems in the world are spiritually based. So, you know, we have a lot of mental That's health. most of the conflict. That's a lot of the conflict. You know, racism is a spiritual disease yeah. because scientifically we're all equal. There's no difference genetically between a black person, a brown person, and a white person. The failure to realize this is a spiritual problem. It's because we're not looking at people soul first. We're looking at them skin first. The same thing with nationality, with the religion people are born into, with gender. The, you know, the soul has no gender. And someone who really sees beauty, for example, me as a man, and say as a straight man, I see beautiful women, but the true beauty in a woman is in her soul. And when you see that, when you start looking at the world that way, you look at it very differently. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it has to tug at your heart when you see the kind of conflicts that, that exist, the, the racism, the anti-Semitism, the Islamophobia, and it's like you said, you know, we're all one. So, you know. I, I tell you about October 7th. What I was doing on October 7th, I was in Haifa, Israel, at the Baha'i Gardens, um, right there on the wall, which you can't, the camera can't see it, but oh, you can we're see gonna, it. Oh, we're going to show you pictures of it. So we were, we were actually walking down those terraces right there. I was with my friend, who's a Palestinian, a Muslim Palestinian, several Muslims, uh, several Christians, African American mostly, um, and a Jewish rabbi. We're all walking down these gardens with a few Baha'is, peacefully, 80 degree sunny day, absolutely beautiful day, all in harmony lots of love and then we get to the bottom and we hear about what Hamas did. It was the biggest contrast, second biggest contrast I've ever felt in my life. Years ago 
I was circumambulating the shrine of Baha'u'llah with a thousand Baha'is from all over the world, all sorts of different colors and ages and from many, many different countries, over a hundred countries, I believe. And we were circumambulating peacefully, celebrating the 200th anniversary of Baha'u'llah's uh, birth. And the same time that was happening, there were, I think, three major terrorist attacks. So this is the second time that type of thing has happened to me. I would say that I just will always want to be on the side of peace. And I, I believe this, too. I believe most people are on the side of peace. What we need to do is go, some of us, have to go from being on the side of peace to actively working for peace. Right. And that's what I would encourage people to do. So with the foundations, um, our stated goal with the Wayfair Foundation is to actively work for unity and peace. And listen, you can, you can do, do some research on the Wayfair Foundation. We're going to put the links here. Uh, as well as the, is, is it Julian and Grace? Julian Grace, yes. Julian Grace. And so you see the kind of work that, that Steve is doing with, uh, with these two foundations, and I know you have a tremendous group of people that, that both work at, that, that work at both of those foundations. Yeah, I should, I should, I gave, um, I gave credit to Scott. Laura Herrick is, is my fearless leader at the Wayfair Foundation, and she's built it up from just a single employee to now we're giving away $19 million this year. So 19 she, million. Yeah, so she, she's built up a whole team at Wayfair Foundation. She does an amazing job every day. You know, and if you know nonprofits that, that need this kind of help, they can always go look and there's an application process and, and get in touch. And, and you hear the kind of work that Steve and his organizations are doing. If you know nonprofits that are out there that are trying to achieve the same goals, you know, reach out because Oftentimes, you know, you have these these nonprofits that they don't know where to go. You know, they, they it's very limited. It, it so, is. you know, being able to to open it up and help, you know, so many different organizations is just amazing. I know you have a personal goal of spending a certain amount of money in your lifetime, and, and I know you're on your way to doing that. Well, my goal is to give away, although I will say this very publicly, I do not ever do personal loans or gifts, so don't right, call right, me right, right, right. And because I would, I would not have enough time to, to breathe in the day, I do everything through the foundations, and even the foundations are, are very picky in who we give money to because there's a lot of need. But um, I do not... Um, I, what, what we do, um, what, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to give away the great majority of my wealth. My goal is by the time I'm 72. I, I decided that last year. I said 15 years, I'm going to give away the great majority of my wealth by the time I'm 72. Because I want to do it not only while I'm alive, but while I'm vital. And I figure I should statistically be in good shape for the next 15 years. And I'd like to do as much as I can to make the world a better place while I'm alive and while I can make good decisions. That's and right. so we're going to keep ramping up. Um, my goal, you know, if you took what I have today, uh, it would be giving away uh, a billion dollars, my, my half of my family fortune. Billion dollars in the next 15 years, in, yeah. now 14 years. Yes, yeah. uh, my, because I don't know, because a lot of it's in sure. stock, I've said I'm going to give away a, mil a minimum of a half a billion, but reasonably probably more like a billion over the next 15 years between the foundations. And, you know, like he said, right now he's carrying the weight of the Wayfair Theater. And for those of you in this area, uh, in the Highland Park area, the northern Chicago area, it, even if it's a 30-minute drive, it's so well worth it between the films that they show that you're producing, the Q&As that they have, the premieres that are going to be coming up, and the members-only events. You know, support the theater, and he's going to support the members that support it. Um, and because again, once once a theater like this closes down, it's it's almost impossible to bring it back. It becomes office buildings. We're not going anywhere. I I, I commit to supporting the theater. Um, I just need a little more support from the community. So we are we are getting more support, but we, we need more than we've gotten. Sure. We need people to come out and say this is what we want. And I've talked to a lot of people who have you know I say have you been back and they haven't. I don't think it's any, I don't take it personally, it's just, you know, they haven't been out to a movie sure. in several years. Between COVID and the mass shooting, there's a lot of people who may not want to go out. But I will tell you that, please come out to the theater. I think you will enjoy it. I think, you know, we, we play very good movies. We have, like, we've talked about our Q&As. I think you'll find, it, as many other people have, that Wayfair Theaters is a very special place. And I would just say, give us a try. 
Steve. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And again, uh, you know, go to the websites. We're going to post them. Go to the Wayfair Theater website so you can see some of the things they're doing. And, and definitely check out the foundations. If you know of nonprofits that, that fit the profile of what they're looking to do, if there's some synergy, uh, reach out because, you know, he's, he's publicly committed to, to donating money to these organizations that, that want to bring peace and want to bring justice and want to bring faith and hope and love to their communities. We, we all should do that. In my opinion, we're all in this together as human beings. Yeah. And I don't see a huge need for me to have a ton of money. It doesn't make sense. I mean, even if I give away the vast majority of my fortune, I'll still live a comfortable life. Who needs more than that? Right. Um, I'm not a big spender anyway. I drive a Prius. Or actually, I've been driving because of my back. I'm more my wife's Toyota van. But I don't need a fancy car. I don't need the nicest house. What I really want to do is to serve humanity. And I think it's a lot more fun. You know, I, owe, I said this in a speech uh, a few weeks ago, that the most selfish thing to do is to be selfless. Mm -hmm. I get more satisfaction out of giving back. And so I really consider myself blessed to have been given this great fortune and to be able to give it away to things I care about. Yeah, how many people talk like that? If more people talk like that in this world, we wouldn't have these kind of issues. Well, thank you again. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. Be well, everybody.